test. And then you would use the, the one that's responded to the most instead of maybe the most money on a larger mailing. Right, exactly, right. exactly. Yeah, Small yeah. mailing, 5,000 right. initially. Okay. Once we know it's there, we actually put this in the autoresponder series. Mm -hmm. uh, autoresponder series is something that once they sign up your email list, like remember when they opted in, they get the 24 offer, they get half off. Mm -hmm. that's, the first e that's the first notice they get in the autoresponder series. Then they start getting an email every day from me. Okay. And if it's a winner like this, it goes in that series. I load it up. Money forever. I'm driving opt-ins from the derivatives that I created from the Facebook video where I spent a whole half hour recording and I'm putting that on wherever that is. I, I spent a half hour recording on Facebook. I've made four derivatives, got those out there with the link forever. It's going to an opt-in page where they're going to opt-in. They're going to start getting an autoresponder series. One of them is this and they're going to get that and I already know it's high powered. Now I'm making money forever because I've done my homework and split testing and I've driven traffic to the site. Yep. One of the things I've uh, watched and learned uh, is uh, video, not the video, but um, graphics with uh, that writing that comes up spontaneously, you know, the one where you see the writing happening in front of you and you can get it in five you know, okay. uh, is more effective than either graphic or um, yeah. Okay, so what you're going to hear is a lot of that. As you get into marketing, you're going to hear that all the time. You're going to hear, oh man, I heard that long form sales copy, you know, the long form is no good anymore. You got to go video. You take all that and you put in a video. That's what people want to see. Don't listen to any of that. Never listen to that. You have to test it because it depends on your long form stuff. It depends on your video. It depends on your email list. That's what matters. Yep. I'm yes, embarrassed sir. to say, I think I saw that picture of Elvis and I was wondering what the world you were doing. What I was you doing? Were on like, that's me? Yeah. I was on that list, I think. <laughs> yeah. We didn't need yeah. That's, that's what I'm doing. doing. I'm, I'm wasting um, time and losing money. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> He's a buy a Maybe my six bucks in there. You were that guy? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, James. Thank you. I was just going to make a comment that I'm part of this Epic membership group. And he said the same thing. He says the thing on the right, the text is a lot more powerful than the graphics. I was using graphics for years with constant contact, and he said that's the money. That's where. Yeah, it is. yeah. I was really surprised. Well, the message yeah. is so personal. Like, I, I love the message. Personal. Yeah, you can make yeah. it personal. Also, you can have their name in here somewhere. You can code that in in your autoresponder. If, yeah. if you put in first name, and it'll take their first name from they opted in. That's why in your opt-ins you should always get name and email address. So the autoresponder has the name and they can use that and personalize the emails. Not this with video, because there's just not enough time to test everything, especially when you have 9,000 products. You choose your targets, yeah. But we have tested other things with video, yes. You would probably use a video after they click. Once they click on there. That would be another test. And you could have a video on the second page. Video versus no video, yep. And, and you're going to get ideas like that all the time. You're going to think, I should use a video. That will sell more. What you think doesn't matter. You have to test. Yep. If you get a good idea, it, it, it's not a good idea. It doesn't mean it's a good idea just because you thought of it. Um, I, and I've had like things that I wake up and I think, hey, a wonderful idea. And, and it turned out to be crap. So you never know. You have to test it. It could be the, the thing that makes you a millionaire. Or it could be something that makes you six bucks. You never know until you test it. Yep. That's the next phase. I think, yeah. one, one question about this. So while you're doing this, I mean, you've got a huge mailing list. So you would remarket the same product with them, or would you do a test section of the small group of your mailing list, do the split test, find out which one works, and then remail it to the rest of the people with the one that works? Is that how you would sometimes, do it? I usually get a little lazy about that. I'll, I'll, sometimes I'll just send the winning one to them again because like, you know, people, you mean people in this test group get right. it twice? Well, not all of them bought it. Not all of them actually opened it, all those 5,000 people. Right. And some of them who did might not unsubscribe so because they're not as annoyed. So you find it and just remail it out to everybody? Yeah. I mean, you can get nitpicky about that. We the, you get into things like suppress emailers, that's e uh, email addresses. You can, you can do things like that. Um, our bigger list that's run through Staffbrook is... Uh, when, I, when I play around with this stuff, it's usually a smaller list, uh, but uh, our bigger list through, through Staffbrook, half a million people, um, we definitely suppress people. We call it, it's called suppressing in email marketing. Um, if, you've already, if you've already mailed to a, a much larger, let's say like uh, you know, 50,000 people got this, 
we don't want all 50,000 again getting it because the subscriber number might go way up. Even though the subscriber percentage is low, you get enough people in there and the subscriber number is going to go up. So if you're just doing little lists like 5,000, I, I don't worry about that. All right, so this is something we talked about yesterday. We talked about layouts. So this is, a, this is for my high-speed daytime recordings, and we decided to test layouts. Um, follow the gold, the gold ring. Yep. So this one won, $582 versus 205. This, this is almost triple the revenue of this one. For some things, the four across works, interestingly enough. We just had an example of that yesterday. For some, some things, it doesn't. For some things, this works better. So here, what we're testing is graphic of my, my CDs. As I mentioned, you should have different covers for them. A uh, link to buy it and a link to a description of it. You can listen to a sample, an overall sample. Everything's exactly the same on each of these. You have an attractive lady listening to headphones. It's like she's listening to my headphones. We paid for that, of course. We have different codes. You can't see this, but there are different codes just so we can track it. And here, I think you enter the code O-N-E, and here T-W-O, so one and two, so we can track the results. Three steps, just say basically, find what you want, load it up, and chop a card, and listen to it. You know, we're making things very very simple for them. So everything is the exact same. That's a very important thing about split testing. When you're split testing, you're only testing one variable at a time. In this case, the variable is layout. This way versus this way. I thought, you know, maybe this would win. Look at all those nice covers that are big. Here, the covers are so tiny, I can hardly see them. Mm. It's made almost three times the amount of money. So you don't go with your intuition. First you do when you build a website, because you don't know, you just throw something up there. And then you, then you start to get other ideas and you test those. Or maybe you go to a seminar and you think this might work, but you test it. Any questions about this split test? Many times when you, when you buy something, um, I've observed whether it's a, a, any kind of software program, uh, like antivirus, they have three columns. You know, the basic gets you this, the, the professional gets you this, the premium gets you that. And, and that seems to, to always work for me as the consumer. I don't know if that means it can hear, but... You don't have to split test it to see if it works for your, to make you money. So you, you like it as a consumer, doesn't actually mean anything. You may be in a minority for all you know. You don't know where you are in the, in the scheme of things. Nice. And also keep in mind that this on a mobile phone will display differently. You're only going to see one of these at a time. You're just going to scroll down. And on a mobile phone, it's just going to display like this. Mm -hmm. And you have to scroll down a series. And this, so this probably looks better for mobile phone people. Maybe that was the reason. Do I care? Nope. What do I care about? Money. Yep. There we go. Also, I'm helping the most people. I mean, if this is going to drive the most people to the change that they want, more money and more helping people. Yes. So yeah, just to comment on the cell phones and stuff. As you may or may not know, most people do their buying on the cell phone. Right? Uh, I wouldn't say most. Uh, oh, I've seen stuff. For us, it's not even a majority. Um, it's not most for us, but maybe in some markets. Can you tell that, or do you have? Oh yeah, we can look at that. I can ask the web designer. I can call her right now and ask her. Um, but I know because I've checked recently that it's less than half. We we do check on that, and that's good to stay up on. And eventually, I think they'll take over. Cell phones will take over. It's just easier. That's where I do my stuff. <laughs> but again, there's you had an idea, or maybe someone told you that cell phones sell more. Don't accept anything as truth anymore ever unless you have data on it or unless that person can show you data on it. I know from my website that most people buy from a computer, not a cell phone. So this is just, an, and I appreciate you guys sort of reading the example. I prefer to do everything on a computer because I, I want to put my credit card number in the computer, not on my phone. Okay, and we as humans tend to think that everyone's like us. Mm -hmm. And that's not true. You don't know where you are in the spectrum. You don't know if you're an outlier. You don't know if you're the average. You have no idea. So, did you have more? No, it's just interesting that it's, the, like your marker, the mark, people who buy from you, they're on a computer, right? I prefer a computer too. Cell phones, again, the, the risk or the, uh, again, hacked or whatever you want to call it, just seems to be a lot higher on the cell Okay. Buying and that may or may not be a reality. And that, but that's that's your personal thing. Yep, yep. So perception. Yeah. Yep. And always challenge that. Always challenge that because that's a big mistake that you can make if you assume that the way you think it should look 
or the way you prefer it to look, or the colors, even the colors of my website are split tested. Yeah. If you assume that, that everyone likes what you like, you're gonna lose a lot of money. Right. And, I, and I fall victim to it also. I thought that the other thing that we looked at a minute ago for years, I thought, well, who the heck wouldn't like this? <laughs> I mean, this is so boring, this is so exciting. People are gonna love that, look at that. 62 bucks versus 135 bucks. I was losing half the money I could have made for years because I thought that people liked what I liked. And I, I was so happy about these graphics. Do you know like the demographics as far as the age group or is it mostly women, mostly men? We don't, no, we don't, we don't separate them. Like, no, a lot of marketers do. They get into all that and they have different lists for different things. Like Ryan Dice, digital marketer, you know, they get into all that stuff. We don't drill down that far. Um, we just have topics specific web lists, uh, email lists rather weight loss, confidence, smoking, we know that these people are interested in this thing. So if we have a product come out in that, we can plug it into that channel. But some of the products we offer to everyone because there are things that we think will appeal across the board. So sometimes segregating your list can work against you because you'll think, oh, it's a product on confidence. Well, my weight loss people won't want it. How do you know? Like they, they're people, they might want confidence. Well, they might know people. Or yeah, there, there you go. I know a guy, he, he doesn't matter. His, his, he, whatever he's selling, he sells to everybody. He doesn't care. He doesn't segregate them out. Yeah, there you go. I mean, it's a, he doesn't. You never know who's gonna what what. Yeah, it's a it's a less effective way to market really well, yeah. overall, but it's a it's less hassle, less work, and he makes, he makes pretty good money. Yeah, yeah. At a certain point, you realize I could split test every single thing on the planet. I could spend my life split testing. Yeah. At a certain point, you just draw the line. You say that's yep. that's that's, that's enough's enough. enough. Here's a picture of me when I was I don't know like seven. I'm sorry. A little kid. A little kid, yeah. I've got a raggedy old towel. So my dad, as I said, was born in Depression time, so we had to reuse everything. There's a raggedy old frayed towel I'm wearing. Those and we're at the next door neighbor's pool. My dad was too cheap to get a pool, or too broke to get a pool initially until we until he, uh, married my stepmom, who was an accountant, and uh, we, then, we, uh, then we got a pool. But we're at uh, Earl Howlett's pool. He was the next door neighbor who was an engineer and always showed me his cool engineering stuff they were doing. He worked for a company called Okidata, and uh, he'd always show me the this fascinating stuff about space, and I don't know what he was involved in, but it was interesting. So we hung out there a lot. I went swimming there a lot. Here's one night when we're over there, my dad's drinking with Earl and his wife, and I'm going swimming in the pool, and I got out, and they thought, oh, what a cute kid, and they took a picture, and we had it. My dad passed away, my stepmom sent it to me, and I thought, I'm gonna pop that up there on a website and see if I can make some money off of that. Did you have a question? No. No, okay. Um, sounds good, right? Yep. I mean, it's me. There's, there's Dr. Steve G. Jones, who's a, a cute young kid, and look at that. I mean, wow, that looks, that looks great. Um, what happened here? So we're testing picture with brief, brief description versus no picture. Okay, so we've got the, my understanding of, okay, we tested to see whether people were more likely to purchase from an email that is a picture of Steve with a brief description or from an email that does not have a picture of Steve and without a brief description. So that's what we're testing there. Ideally, we'd want these things to be consistent. The only thing different would be the picture. At any rate, what happens? Okay. What's that? Pick wheel. They don't like Steve as much as they like <laughs> no Steve. Yeah, they'd rather. Now, now all we're looking at, we're looking at number of orders. So that's still money. We're, whatever this price is, let's say it's a dollar each. That's eight bucks versus five bucks. That's the way you can look at it. So almost double with no Steve. So when you say leave your ego at the door, and you know, and I, when I say don't, don't just think that what you think everyone likes, they like, that because that's meaningless. You have to test it. Conclusion: People are more likely to purchase from an email without a picture of Steve, and without a description. Ideally, this just would have tested one parameter, but you get the idea. I think even if we kept the apples to apples and a picture of Steve, no picture, I think the picture would have lost. That's a sad fact, but we mm -hmm. have to accept it. Are there any things that you guys, I mean, you guys have been throwing out questions a lot over the last uh, day and a half. Any questions that you guys have at this point? And, and it may not even be related to this. Any marketing questions that you guys have? Stuff you're thinking of doing, stuff you are doing, anything? I have five or six products now, right? So I'm booking out and split tests and all this stuff. Because I can just make some, I have some videos, or let's say, for example, I have some interviews that I've done before. Some of them have pretty decent content in it. I could split those up and put them out on YouTube. And Definitely. What are they doing right now? They're being very 
Jabber in audio. <laughs> oh, your Dropbox <laughs> on your phone, yeah. Somewhere. Get it out. Um, Get it out there. And then put the link to the website that eventually will be released <laughs> once I get the information from it. And so how do you then add more new products to your store? So I only have five or six, so then I'll have ten more. And you just kind of add it to that list and send yeah, them out. You don't you do stuff or just yeah, yeah. Let them know by email. You don't need a bunch of products. I know people who are multimillionaires from one product. I know people sell weight, a weight loss product, just one weight loss product, and they make millions of dollars a year off of that one product. What do they sell the product for? Do you know? No, I don't know. And it probably changes based on their split testing, which probably changes over time based on the demographics of their, their audience. Yes? What do, you, what do you think of joint veteran or affiliate? Or doing, yeah, like if you have no list or buying list, that's what, what I was going to Oh, yeah, absolutely. So that's, that takes us into a different, uh, different. Oh, so we'll take a little break from, from this. I didn't want to just plug away with data if you guys have actual. Good question. Can we join venture with Lucy? Well, we get approached about joint ventures all the time. I mean, daily, we get approached about joint ventures. Somebody had a question? I mean, just versus joint venture with somebody versus just purchasing an email with you. Wow. Purchasing an email list sounds a little sketchy. Right. Is that, uh, don't, maybe don't say it on the video if you're doing that. Well, I'm not doing it, I'm just okay. wondering. You can purchase an entire website and it comes with an email list and that's perfectly legal. If you're buying an email list and putting it into your email list, pretending that those subscribers are your subscribers, you're committing a federal crime and you can go to prison for that. So, which one are you talking about? <laughs> Well, I'm not sure. Never done <laughs> That's that. a good answer. I think they're But I've, I've, I've seen the email list for sale. Okay. Well, call the FBI and report yeah. them. Any other questions? But aren't you better off to just start putting your product out there, YouTube, what have yes. you, and then the organically people who are interested in your product, yes. you're going to start capturing their emails, and that's the that's the demographic that you want. Yes. So that's what I that, teach. Right, so that's... Stay out of prison, stay out of trouble, make some money. Yes, what we sleep at humble, night. Seriously, what were your humble beginnings? How did you start? Did you start with one little product and did this? or I started with like 10. When I first got online, I started with like 10. Mm -hmm. but, but they were the top ones. They were like confidence, motivation, weight loss, smoking. So I looked at what was out there. Mm -hmm. Had them recorded by a couple sound engineers. Did I tell you guys that story? Yeah, yeah, yeah you did. Yeah. And then just Stop built your list. One. Just built your list and just did it. Yeah, and I never even worried about a list. I mean, people are so into list, 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 list. I mean, Jesus. Really? Just if if you if you get out there, if you if you take the time to get on Howard Stern, if you take the time to put uh, videos on YouTube every day of your life until the day you die, you don't have to worry about a list. Okay, it's kind of like if you're, I don't know, if you go to a job, you don't have to worry about money, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. If you're, yeah, if you're showing up doing the right things, it's going to take care of itself. I'll tell you what, lists. The size of a list doesn't matter. The quality of a list matters. So you can buy a list, and it may be a bad fit for your people. If you let's say you buy a list illegally, which you would never do, but if you did buy a list illegally, put it into your list, then they may not be targeted anyway. They may be people who like something else or someone else, yeah. and they don't like you or the way you do things or your type of products. Nothing against you. It's just a different list that's not congruent with your people. So, yep, any other questions? Oh, Kelly, were we in the middle of fi fixing this thing? And I said you just need one. I recommend five for you guys. What was your motivation to then go to like 9,000? Oh, okay. Um, let me think back. That's a good question. I guess that's where kind of Greg was going, asking to relive take a journey down the river. Of, uh, God, I mean, so many things happen in life, who knows? Um, I think I just realized that, you know, mostly customer driven, um, people would write in and say, do you have a recording on this? And I'd realize there's a, there's an audience for that. Yeah. Or why don't you have a recording on this? Right. Yeah. Or a joint venture. People would, you know, Vishen Lakhiani from Mind, Mind Valley want to do uh, the art of astral projection .com. You know, I didn't know it would do close to half a million in the first couple of days. I had no idea. I just liked astral projection. He wanted to do it and he had a list. So we did it. So it, it made money. Because I can apply this to both sides of my practice. Would you suggest that I have two different websites? You can do like I do and have categories. I have a metaphysics, metaphysics. category. All the you know frou frou stuff that people consider frou frou, um, which I think is very valuable, uh, goes in that. Then I have dental stuff and medical type stuff. So then yeah, I can just still so do one. So if you do want to keep it under one roof, have it in different categories. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, ideally, if you could just if you just have two different things and you don't mind having two different uh, you know identities and two different cards, that might be the I best do. way to do it. I do. Okay, that might be the best way to do it because then you separate and here's the stuff that's kind of out there and here's the mainstream stuff. So. But still do it on one website. Even though I've separated out on business cards? I, I, yeah, I, I think you can do that. Again, you'd have to experiment for that, and that, that may not uh, lend itself to an easy split test because um, you'd have to it'd take, it would be complicated, I think. But um, yeah, you can, you can do that. Two different, so you're talking about two different cards and one website? Yes. Something for everyone? Yes. Click on this if you like this, click on that if you like that. Yeah. I think that's fine. Okay. I think that's fine, and that's um, kind of the approach I do. Sometimes I'll do spiritual type interviews where people say, tell me how you manifested this. Sometimes I'll do more um, uh, grounded type videos where they say, what are the nuts and bolts of this? Mm -hmm. And so, but we're referring them to the same website that has something for both crowds, actually. Very good. Thank okay, you. cool. And a lot of it depends on what you've done so far and not destroying everything you've done, just making it fit into a logical framework.